I find that a thoroughly enjoyable film noir, regardless of it being built on an utterly preposterous plot. It's got so much pace and so many twists and turns, you feel like Glenn Ford on that mountain road, out of control with no brakes. Not a bad job for a first-time screenwriter. Frey marked the Hollywood debut of 38-year-old Ben Matto, for whom this kind of escapist entertainment was a well-paid vacation. Matto, you see, was a genuine artist. By the time he graduated from Columbia University in 1930, he had already published a volume of critically acclaimed poetry. And in 1935, he became one of the founders of Frontier Films, a cadre of socially-minded documentary filmmakers committed to creating a new type of cinema, dealing with social issues not being covered in the mainstream press. Matto was a reporter with a camera, shaping and honing the focus of documentaries as they were being shot, and at times staging reenactments for the camera. He later called the approach cine poetry, and what he strived for in the 1930s would decades later fill up cable TV. They aren't related, but Ben Matto and Anthony Bourdain are soul brothers. And when he came to Hollywood after World War II, Matto's intention was to score quick cash and return to his more high-minded pursuits, poetry, photography, and documentaries. But his facility with screenwriting caught the attention of some significant filmmakers. And in 1949, he found himself working on two projects of far more import than framed. One was an adaptation for John Huston of W.R. Burnett's classic crime novel, The Asphalt Jungle. The other was Clarence Brown's take on William Faulkner's Intruder in the Dust, an expiation of racism in a small Mississippi town that Maddow ingeniously worked into a noir-stained detective story. Now, Maddow would become a legend among industry colleagues for his indifference to Hollywood fame and fortune. He turned down work on one big-budget film by telling the producer, no thanks, I'm working on a really long poem. Like many artists in the early 50s, Maddow's livelihood was threatened when anti-communist witch hunters demanded his blacklisting. Years earlier, he'd been a vital contributor to the documentary Native Land, which was a lightning rod for the HUAC committee due to its pro-union slant and a roster of creators linked to the Communist Party. But like some other writers in the same boat, Maddow continued to write scripts using fronts, among his uncredited credits, The Wild One, Johnny Guitar, and Anthony Mann's sensational Men in War. By the end of the 1950s, Maddow's name was back on screen, but now he was taking jobs to underwrite his work as an independent filmmaker. Two of his films from the time, The Savage Eye and Affair of the Skin, have recently been resurrected, revealing Maddow as a daring and innovative artist, definitely ahead of his time. Now, I'll wind up with a nice story told to me by Anne Savage, the star of Detour, which we've shown previously on Noir Alley. Anne admitted to me that she was dumped by Columbia Pictures in 1945 because they'd signed Janice Carter. Anne knew that she and Carter would always be vying for the same roles, and she was destined to lose out. For years, she held a grudge, blaming Carter for essentially relegating her to Poverty Row. Well, as fate would have it, both women ended up retiring from the business about the same time, both married big shot businessmen, and both relocated to New York and ended up living only blocks apart. Of course, in no time, they became best friends. When I'd visit her, I'd notice that Anne kept a framed photograph of Janice Carter on her dressing table. Okay, I'm setting the odds at six to five. You're all going to be back here next week when Noir Alley reveals the $8 billion secret behind America's notorious gambling racket. In the meantime, be sure to join us on Facebook and Twitter for all things noir. And until then, don't leave your monogrammed silk robe where it doesn't belong.